What is good, everybody? Happy Tuesday. All right, let's get this thing started. Sorry, I was finishing eating. Uh, it's back in volleyball season, man. So we are all about running people around and practice after practice after practice. So uh, let's dive into it. How's everybody doing? Happy Tuesday. Uh, I'll tell you what, I don't normally trade Mondays and yesterday was a decent day. Today was a decent day. Um, and hopefully you guys have seen the news calendar, but, uh, let's, uh, let's dive into it. Let's go over here. Here we go. Bam. All right. And does volley, uh, man, it, it did. We had a week off. We had a week off between club season to, um, to school season. And then school season ended. Uh, when did school season end? School season ended, man. I don't even know. School season ended. We had maybe like two weeks off of not driving around and not going to practices, not going to games. But my, my middle daughter had a tournament this past weekend. So uh, up in Daytona Beach. And my older daughter now is we're going right back to Daytona Beach this weekend. So, yeah. Thank God gas prices are low. You know, that's all I got to say. <laughs> yeah, it is a it is a very short off season, but it is what it is. No biggie. Um, yeah. 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 Gas prices, man. It's killing me. Um, all right. So listen, I mean, hopefully everybody has peeped over here at this news calendar because we're, we're going to have a lot of volatility, especially Thursday. Uh, Thursday, the pound, the euro, the dollar. I mean, and, you know, I've been, I've been really focusing in on majors this week uh, just because I, I, I think that's where the cleanest setups are, um, you know, following, you know, just the continuation move. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty clear what, what the dollar is doing. It's pretty clear. Um, what the yen is doing because of U.S. indices. And hopefully you guys have been looking at those shorts on U.S. indices because I've been selling the crap out of them. <clears throat> G, <laughs> don't even get me started on GU, man. <laughs> uh, dude, my son's right behind me. And I'll tell you what, you know what, you know what I ended up having to do today? I ended up having to put a new monitor on my desk. So that, that'll give you exactly what... Uh, what GU did. So what's the biggest R to R I've had this year? Oh no, no, that's Chef JPY, man. Yeah. Chef JPY, I think it was like a one to five fifty or something. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. G GU was killing me, man. GU just, I mean, I think the closest I got to the GU entry was point two, it was two pipettes, point two pips. Um and and I couldn't even market execute by the time by the time I double clicked on the PSC. Uh, to activate the order to market execute like we had moved we had just dropped like four pips and I was like you've got to be kidding me man so it is what it, it is yeah eg went break even yeah I took I took that little partial this morning uh, but we'll cover it we'll go over it you know it is what it is I mean and, and if you remember like I talked about it I mean I threw it in the chat that um, you know we I would I if if that failed that I was looking at that lower area and you know look where we're at now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I took partials right when we were on the session. You know, I, I had that and I'll go over it. I was looking at that what, like 8550 area. And um, and I think we were like at 8548. So I was like, I don't care about the one pip. So still new to white cough. Uh good, good. Yeah, man. Uh feeling a little bit lost with so much content in I am. So much content for white cough in I am. Don't get me started on IM right now, man. I'm, I'm, uh, for those of you guys that don't know, so I'm, I'm still in IM, you know, and I, I don't plan on like leaving it. I mean, it, for me, it's a, it's a good tax write off. And, you know, I have some really good buddies in IM, but, you know, um, I was telling this story earlier. I had, a, I had to change my credit, I had to cancel my credit card because of some fraud issues. So I got a new credit card in the mail and I went to go put that information in and it's telling it's, it won't let me pay my, my monthly membership because it says that my name on my card is not the same name on my account. And I kid you not, it is to the letter, the same damn name. So I've been going back and forth with, I am support whoever they are. I don't know, you know, and they just keep bouncing me around. So I'm like, all right, well, listen, I'll give you guys a week. If you can't figure it out, I'm just not going to renew my membership. So it's just so stupid, man. Uh, 
would I be interested in doing an interview for a YouTube channel that interviews Forex traders? Um, I mean, I don't care. I just, I'll tell you right now, like I, I literally just don't have time, um, you know, between, between all the other junk I've got going on. Um, yeah. Like it's, it, especially now that volleyball season's in full mix, man, I'm, I am, my nights, my evenings are tied up. Um, you know, my mornings are trading and my, my afternoons are me trying to get, you know, my butt in the gym, me trying to get, uh, you know, my girls situated and yeah, man, I, I mean, I don't mind if I, if I could try to figure it, fit it in somewhere, but yeah, my weekends are done, you know, now that season's back in. So yeah, you could pay. I am in Bitcoin as well. Yeah. But I'm not doing that because if I paid in Bitcoin, I don't get the tax deduction. So you know, if they really don't want my money, then they're not going to get it. I mean, that's, that's how I look at it. Um, yeah. Uh, you tried selling SPX too. Yeah, I know, bro. Don't even get me started on that. Listen, pretty much everything I said that I was looking to do today happened. Just, I, I only worked an entry in a couple, a couple spots, you know, but we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll get into the charts right now, you know, but yeah. So listen, I mean, just, just take your pick. You know, we, we've got a smorgasbord of total just annihilation on some, on some good pairs. So we'll see a lot, of, a lot of rate changes, you know, a lot of FOMC statements, a lot of rates, PMI data coming out. Uh, I mean, so essentially you've got FOMC, right? If we look at it, you have FOMC for the US dollar. You have FOMC for the Swiss franc. You have FOMC for the pound, and I think that's it. Uh, oh, no, no, and the euro, <laughs> and the euro. So I'll tell you right now, um, you know, I've, I've been, I've really done, I've been really working on increasing my knowledge in macro and microeconomics, right? And historically, you know, obviously everyone knows that the interest rates just, fell through the roof. They needed, you know, the central banks needed to do that in order to stabilize the economy, right? Um, I'll tell you right now, the, the US Federal Reserve has already said that uh, into Q3 of 2022, they are going to be increasing rates. Um, so that is going to cause a domino effect. And I can almost guarantee you, you're going to start seeing the same sentiment from all of these people right here. All right. So we'll see, we'll see how that plays, you know, um, and if, if we do start to see some interest rates going up, um, obviously that's fantastic for banks because that's how they make their money, but that's going to greatly influence all the currency indexes. Okay. So yeah, the same issue with credit card. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know what their issue is, man. It's not my bank. Like it's, it's not even like my bank's not even getting the transaction. They just won't let me actually save the credit card information in my account because they're saying that I'm, you know, it's supposedly not my card, which man, it's my card, man, you know? So it is what it is. They, they got a week. If they don't do it, you know, then sorry for them. I'll just, uh, you know, I'll keep my 190 somewhere. Actually, I think it's only like 160 because I've been with them for like four years. So I've got the low, I, like I, I had like the original plan with them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I just use it as the tax deduction. You know what I mean? Uh, what kind of curve monitor do I have? Um, so the new one that I just bought was a Scepter. It's a 34 inch scepter, 5K screen. I think it was like on Amazon here. Um, I guess I should spell Amazon right. Uh, ba, 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 ba. I'll tell you what, the one I really like, it's, it's the other one that I have on my screen here. I have this Viotech. So Viotech uses uh, this one right here. Viotech uh, uses Samsung products. So the only like, when, when it comes out of the, the manufacturer, they either slap a Samsung logo on it or they slap Viatech on it. So the one I have is a 5K, uh, where is it? Well, I guess the one I bought last year may not even been on here, but yeah, this is, this is about the one I got right here. It's a 100 hertz, 
refresh screen. Uh, yeah, there you go, 5K. So that's the one I have. And then the one I just bought, yeah, this is the one I just bought right here. Uh, no, no, not this one, because this is only 2560, hold on. Yeah, but this, I bought this brand right here. These are the two brands I I, I kind of like because I could buy them in bulk because of the, you know, I always kind of break them. Um, no sense in buying like some crazy brand name when it's it's pretty much the same components. So, yeah. Um, best crypto passive income? Um, I don't know if there's a best, man. I guess it's all dependent upon how much you want to how much you want to throw. I can tell you this, having multiple crypto investments is probably the way to do it, man. Um, you know, most of you guys know I'm, I'm big into mining now. I've got five mining rigs and, you know, I'm mining, I am mining Ethereum. I am, uh, let's see. So I've got, I've got five rigs now and I've got a total of 20 cards. What are there? Uh, I've got a total of 20 GPU cards and I've got, uh, it says 48 CPUs, but it's only two CPUs, but they're, they're running because of how, you know, they're, um, they're rising nines. So um, do you know about strong block? Yes, I do. Yep. Uh, I'll tell you right now. I mean, if you can afford it, you can do it, but um, I, I have one strong block node that I got about eight months ago before the massive push. But um, I mean, I'll, it's, yeah. I mean, you, you have to stake, you have to stake strong block, you know, and you have to buy a certain amount. I think the cumulus, what is it? Uh, the cumulus is, hold on. I'll tell you right now what you gotta, cause there's three levels. I'm only in the cumulus level cause I didn't want to put that much into it. Uh, 10 strong. Is that what it is? It's only 10. Are you sure? I mean, it might be. Hold on. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it might be. I'm trying to see where it's at. I mean, if you're if you're positive on it, yeah, that's that's all you gotta you gotta throw. It, but just keep in mind because I'm doing that. I'm doing um, what's the other one I have? I have Ohm. I'm running a node. I've got I've got an entire shelf of just different nodes that I'm running. Um, but yeah, I mean that's that's another way to do it. I mean, heck, I'm I'm running uh, that DPR. Um, I am running, uh, oh, wait, wait, no, no, hold on. Wrong one, uh, ohm. Yeah. Hold on one second. I am running, I'm running a, 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 a Mysterium node. I'm running a strong block node. I'm running a um, ohm node. What's the other one? I've got a Ravencoin node. Yeah, I mean, nodes nodes are definitely awesome. You just got to get in early because if you get you get one of these that are, um, you know, you get one of these that are already through the roof, and you've got a stake, you know, however much you know twenty five thousand dollars worth. I mean, at that point, if you got the income, great. But I'm not investing that much into just a node because you got to lock it up for such a, a long period of time. <clears throat> you know. Um, do you do your mining rigs? Uh, no, no, no. Like uh, I mean, my 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 total like this entire rig. What am I using up? I'm. I mean, I know this isn't this isn't at the wall, but uh, where are we at? Yeah, right here. So two point four five five kilowatts is what I'm running right now. So now, granted, I'm lucky because I have a solar system at my house. I I put a solar system in my house about three years ago. So my, uh, my actual light bill increase was very minimal. Like I, I think I pay an extra, I pay probably an extra, like, well, I know in the summertime I'm going to pay more, but like right now in the wintertime, cause I'm in sunny South Florida, we use our AC a lot. 
Um, so I'm paying probably anywhere between 30 and $45 more a month, but I'm making just on, just on everything I'm, I'm running. Right. I mean, you could see, um, my hash rate and all that I am making about, well, last month I cleared $2,500, um, for the month in profits. So, I mean, that's, that's what I'm, you know, essentially I'm making 2,500 and I'm, I'm using about, you know, $45 worth of, uh, of electricity. So it's worth it for me, you know, so I've got, I'm running this, I'm running my DPR. Um, I'm running a DPR token as well. Uh, where's DPR. I mean, these are all my mining pools and stuff that I'm running. Um, this one here, it's also got a, let's see. Yeah, I mean, I'm at, what am I making? Yeah, I'm already at, you could see every day I'm making, I think like something like 12, 12 tokens. So yeah, I definitely, I definitely am all about making passive income with crypto. Uh, tax back on the mining rigs. Uh, what do you mean? Like a tax write-off? Yeah, yeah. For, for everything I, everything I bought as a tax write-off. So Yeah. Yep. Uh, do you use the same exact technical analysis methods with crypto? Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, where did I learn about crypto mining? YouTube. Yeah, YouTube, man. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, all right, my bad. Hold on. Uh, what's uh, the, the monitor I have is a 34 inch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, no, I, I definitely... I definitely, if, if you can start working some, uh, some passive income with crypto and then staking, I mean, that's the other one. Remember there's, there's two ways, there's, there's, there's two ways to make earn crypto mining, right? You know, POC and POS. So, um, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, essentially proof of work is going to come out of either your, your rigs or it's going to come out of, you know, proof of stake which, you know, like I stake everything. I mean, heck, I've, I've made, I don't know if you guys saw, but, but Superbid right now, Superbid is 100% APY for staking. And it's only a lockup of, I think, like 90 days. Um, and if you, if you provide liquidity through Uniswap, right? It is a freaking 250% increase. Like, I don't even care if the damn tokens lose half their value, making a hundred percent on it is well worth it. I, I mean, I've, I've almost in the last like three months, I've almost doubled my holdings on like super bid. So, which is crazy. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I mean, there's people that, there's people that trade like volatility indexes, bro. And that, that just doesn't work for me. Where's like the VIX? <laughs> There's people that trade this. <laughs> uh, my technical analysis don't work on this, man. <laughs> this is, this is, this is like gambling. This was like playing like high frequency trading and stuff. Yeah. You need to have an LLC for your right. Actually you, you need to have, so the LLC at least allows you to put things in your business's name, but to have, especially if you live in the U.S., the best, uh, and I, I would definitely consult the state that you're in, um, but the best, the best way to run your uh, trading slash, you know, overall investment business is having, developing an S corporation. That way you can have, you know, all the write-offs that, that, you know, you are entitled to. You know, so I, I, my, my home office is my business, right? So I write off, you know, portions of my property tax, my mortgage, you know, my internet bill, my light bill, my, my water bill, you know, my landscaper, my, um, you know, um, I, I mean, all, yeah, like anything and everything that I can write off, I'll, I, I will, you know, um, you know, I got to keep my office clean. So, I'll, you know, we have a housekeeper. So, you know, my office, you know, I do, I do work from my office. I do work from my backyard. I do work from my living room. I do work from my bedroom. So yeah, you know, um, 
more about staking and mining any YouTube videos you can recommend. Um, yeah, m mining, I mean, just just Google mining. I mean, um, there's there's a lot of, like the mining community is huge, man. There's, there's, there's so many, you know, I'll tell you what, like the, 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 the trick is when you, when you jump on like YouTube, you know, and I'm sure, I'm sure everyone already knows this, but when you jump on YouTube, you know, and, you know, you jump on, you know, like, you know, Vo okay. So like, these are the people I follow, like Voscoin, right. You know, you, you want to jump on somebody that's got maybe, I don't know, 530 subscribe, 30,000 subscribers. This, you know, this guy actually, know, he's pretty cool, man. He, he knows what he's talking about, you know? So I jump on him, Voscoin you know, uh, red Panda mining, right. This is one of the guys I learned how to mine and stuff with 190,000 subscribers, you know, the guy, you know, the, you know, nothing, nothing against it, but the guy that's got like 400 subscribers, you know, maybe just doesn't have a lot of experience yet, you know? So, you know, I, I, I definitely, and, and when, when you land on one of them, you know, then, you know, they'll, they'll have guest guys on and then you'll jump onto theirs. And then you kind of just keep, it's like a, a big spider web. And eventually you'll have just a long list of people that you follow, you know, um, you know, yeah, yeah. Where's, yeah. I mean, so I, I would start with Voscoin. I would start with red Panda mining. Um, you know, the, where's the, uh, where's another one? That's pretty good. Um, you know, red Fox crypto is another one. Uh, the hobbyist miner, pretty good as well. So if you want to get into mining, great. Um, you know, Voscoin though is is you know not only mining but a lot of crypto information. Um, I actually get a lot of early stuff, uh, you know, stuff coming out on the horizon, NFT stuff from Voscoin's website. And then another one that's pretty good is where is the tactical? Let's see. Oh, tactical investing. This guy right here. So. You know, this guy has a lot. And if you really want to learn about nodes, this is, you know, really, he's got really, really good info on here. Tons of videos. I think he drops like a video like a day or something like that. So um, a lot of stuff, you know, he's the reason I got into, um, he is the reason I got into um, Helium at the beginning of the year. He's the reason that I've been really pushing Flux. And if you, you know, Flux is something that I'm mining right? Uh, you know, I've been mining Flux for a very long time. I've got two rigs on Flux. I've got this one here on Flux, and I've got this one here on Flux. Um, and if you look over at Flux, man, that thing is just, I, I, I've been mining it since like April. And oh, wait, no, no. Crypto mining Flux. Here you go. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's what it's been doing. You know what I mean? So I've been mining it since way down here when it was 11 cents and we saw it hit, you know, $3. So I'm making, I'm making 50 flux a day off my two rigs, you know, so I'm making like right now, as it is at a dollar 50, you know, I'm making, you know, about 75, $85 a day, which is fantastic. You know what I mean? Like when you, when you do the math on it, you know, and, and, you know, $75 a day at 365 days. I mean, that's, that's close to like $27,000, you know, that's it. So how much do those two rigs run me? So, I mean, that's, that's the trick, man. The trick is finding, finding the deals. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll tell you this, like, I don't, I don't pay scalp prices, you know, uh, like on, on this one right here, this 3060 TI, this Zotac one, I, I bought from Zotac direct. Um, you know, I probably paid 600 bucks for it. Um, this 10, 1050 TI. Yeah. I bought it on eBay. The guy, uh, a bunch of the 1050s that I bought, I paid like 30 bucks, 50 bucks for them. I think the most I paid was $50. Cause they were all, they said they were broken. So all I did was pay, I bought on Amazon, a box for $12 of, uh, GPU fans and replaced the fans. And now they, voila, they work. So for the most part, um, you know, most, most of the 3060 TIs are six to $700 each, you know, um, you know, so I've got, you know, on this rig right here, I probably got about, you know, $700 invested in that. Um, and then on my other rig, on my other rig, I've got one 3060 TI here, which this is the MSI one I bought on at Best Buy for 700. Uh, and then 
you know, the rest of them combined were probably like 150. So I probably got 850, you know, 850, 600. So we're 1450. So I've got about like 1500 worth of, um, you know, worth of GPUs mining flux. And I can tell you, I've already, I mean, I, I've already broken even. I broke even a while ago on it. So now I'm just making, you know, that passive income over and over. And I'm, I'm not selling it. I'm just holding on to them because I, I don't need to sell it yet. So, yeah. Um, uh, do I do mentoring? Um, yeah, I, like I have a small little group that I do. Uh, what's, what's well, uh, I would love to learn more about stay. Okay, I got you. How much, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah it, it did, it did, bro. Oh, look who jumped on Zoom, bro. What's up, man? UJ for you. Oh yeah, I guess we should get to charts, man. My bad, hold on. Um, yeah, yeah, just look into the escort, bro. Uh, Nestor, yeah, look into the escort. It's, uh, you know, obviously it's the government, so they're gonna want you to pay just a little extra, um, but it's, it's pretty simple, man. Like it, it, I live in Florida and I, I did everything online, bro. You know, all I did was just fill out the paperwork and just sent it in, so yeah. This is what you took on UJ. Yeah, so I this was my entry. This was my entry right here, bro. That was my entry, you know, break even and break even, bro. Uh, we'll go over it. Yeah, we can go over it. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 no. I, I'll tell you, if you want one that doesn't break the bank, I'll tell you right now. Everybody knows, what, I mean, I did a video on it. Everybody knows what a Raspberry Pi is, right? I'm sure, like, my son had one laying around the house. The thing uses, what's it use? I wonder if I can, here you go, hold on. I'm going to screenshot this and then throw it up. Uh, actually, you know what? I wonder if I can share. I wonder if I can share. Anyway, ra the Raspberry Pis. Let's see. Let me see if I can share. Hold on. Um, all right, here we go. Yep. So my the Raspberry Pi is the Mysterium node, right? And it is using currently <laughs> zero power it's using. And you could see what the power in December in November and in January was, it uses absolutely zero power, right? Uh, like currently right now, 0.05 is what, I'm, what I've used today, right? That's what I've used today. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it, the Raspberry Pi, I mean, you can buy them for like 30 bucks. Um, and I've got it just connected to my ethernet. I've, I've got the node software, um, you know, Input, you know, pretty much all you do, you download it off of like GitHub, you put it onto a little SS, uh, little SD micro SD card, you put it in the at Raspberry Pi, and I am making, I'm making probably, depending on where, because it's all based on how much data goes through your node. Um, I averaged the lowest in in October. Um, in October, I made forty. Uh, I made forty Mysterium. Uh, and in November, I made 96. So we come over to we come over to Mysterium, right? And all you're doing is just like data sharing. That's that's all it is, right? You're just you're using your your. It's almost like a um, like a hub, like kind of like how how Helium is. You're just transferring data. You come over to Mysterium, and like I said, I made 96 last month. So Mysterium before the big drop, Mysterium was trading at a dollar 40. So you know let's just say I made 140 bucks, you know, anywhere between a hundred and $140 is what I'm making a month for something that cost me. Well, it cost me nothing, but can cost anywhere between 25 and $50 and uses probably $5 in power a month, you know, and you can run as many as you wanted these damn things, you know? So yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's pretty decent. So yeah, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm running a Mysterium node and yeah, you could see that run. That was a pretty nice run in, in November. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, all right. Cool. Cool. I'm all caught up. Look at that. I love it. Um, all right. So anyway, let's dive into it. So we got, we got GU on the table. Let's, let's run through GU, right? Um, where do you look for future accumulations or distributions? Um, yep. So 
figure out what your next structure point is, whether it's lower time frame, intraday, or higher time frame, and then look for the points of interest. Look for cause and effect. What created the new high? You know that that would be my slingshot, is what I call it, right? Patent patent uh, approved, and um, you know, and then of course the extreme of it, you know, the leg that's maintaining it. All right, so UJ, real, you know, we'll kind of, I'll kind of go through my thought process on UJ here. So obviously, I'm mad bullish on this, right? Uh, when we look at the chart on UJ, mad bullish, no questions about it, right? Um, if I want to buy UJ, though, right, I don't want to buy from here, right? If I want to buy UJ, I'm waiting here or I'm waiting here, right? Um, Unfortunately, I don't think we're coming here anytime soon. I was really hoping to get into this. You know, UJ has been that pair that this year has just been ever so elusive for me. Um, you know, all of this right here just kept missing orders. Um, so with that in mind, we, we tap into supply over here to the left, right? You could see, yeah, you could see the supply point that we tap in over to the left. Oh, hold on, that we tap in over, there it goes. We tap into the supply point over to the left after running all of these highs. And then what do we do? We distribute. So I have reason, right, to speculate that UJ is going to get us a pullback either into this area here, because essentially this is maintaining our leg, right? And this is the SC that broke the new high as well as this high, okay? So we have reason to speculate that UJ is going to give us a pullback because, because of the JPY, right? I've been very, very of, of recent, right? Of within the last two weeks, I have, screw you, GU, bro. Um, I've been very, very bearish on US indices because we're seeing signs of massive distribution. So if I am bearish on U.S. indices, right, yes. that means that I'm going to be bullish on the yen. And if I'm bullish on the yen, that means that UJ should be coming down, right? So this is why I was, I was kind of looking for the short this morning. And I mean, it gave it, you know, like you could see. So we had, I did catch, last week I did catch this really, really super clean distribution right in here. Um, I mean, I think I talked, I don't know, maybe I didn't talk about it last week, but super clean distro. I mean, just pinpoint came right into my 80, took it down. Um, so after that, you know, I'm just, you know, I took some profits on it. And now what I was looking for this morning was a continuation. So you could see here, right. We had and I knew better. I mean, I told, I told everybody, like I, I was expecting some, some bearishness, but I really wanted us to take this high and I wanted us to come into that. But we had our Frankfurt move. We had the break of order flow. Price came in and gave us a distribution. So I pulled the trigger on it, right? So I got in, I got in right here. Here you go. So here was my order right here. So you could see the distro, right? We've got plenty of our drives, one, two, three drives, and then we get our UTAD. So measuring our UTAD, right? Measuring our UTAD, this is the 80% right here. And then when you measure the last push, this is 50%. So I took it off the 50%. It was going to get me filled earlier. This was a 0.9 pipette stop loss. And coming in, you could see the attempted accumulation. You can see price giving the reason to come back to mitigate, and then we get the redistribution. So I was looking pretty with it. Um, I did take partials. Uh, as soon as we actually, where did I take? I guess I took partials right here. Um, it was at a one to 11, but real, in reality, it was not because I had about a half of a pip stop. Uh, so I was probably like at a one to six. So all I did was just pay myself what I risked on this trade, um, which was fine. So I, I walked away with a one to one on it. Um, and then you could see price comes back, gives a decent mitigation. Um, at this point here, I didn't get in. It didn't give me 
Um, it didn't give me the entry I wanted. I was actually looking at some other pairs at the time when this happened. And then you could see, here's my 50% mark. This is where I had my order, right? So all I did was just measure this last push. I had an order sitting here, missed it by 0.3, I think, pipettes, if I remember correctly. 0.4, missed it by 0.4 pipettes. And then obviously we get the push. So on that push, yeah, I was, I was done with it. And then ultimately she just ends up clapping me out at break even after, after the play right here. So we come into afternoon session in New York. It was just, you know, just ends up reaccumulating and taking off. So, and then at this point here, you could see another reaccumulation. Um, so I'm still, I'm still looking for the short, you know, if, if she comes up into specifically this play right here. But that's kind of my thought process on why I was looking to short it. But yeah, if we come into that right there um, and we get a distribution, I'll give I'll give her a looks. You know, I'll I'll, I'll see what I can do with it. Um, uh, tell me if my logic looks correct and if you can add some tips. All right, what's your logic? What? Yeah, Are you gonna throw the? Can you throw the chart in the? Throw the chart in the chat and I'll, I'll, I'll just copy it and open it up. Oh, and look who finally decides to. Yeah, so that was UJ. All right, um, going down the list, right? There's no update for me on Chef JPY, man. This, this thing is just, we, we are just going into the world's longest accumulation or redistro. We don't know yet. Um, actually, did, uh, did anybody this morning take the sell out of it? I know somebody who was looking at the sell out of it. Because there was the, what was it? The, like the, I think there was the type two, right? Yeah, it was it. Uh, yeah, it was a type two. Yeah, somebody, I know, I know somebody was looking at it. You know, we had, we had the type two, we had, we had that break. We had price come back and give another type two. So Chef JPY apparently was liking the type twos this morning. Um, nothing, nothing that I wanted to get into. You know, I mean, obviously we're just massively bullish on this. and. You know, I've, I've kind of got it boxed out. I want to see what we do. Um, as far as I'm concerned, you know, we are, supply is still in control, right? In the short term, supply is still in control. So I, I'm anticipating, and you can see, you know, this thing can just be drawn out and we've got, we've just got our ice being built here. So I'm still, I'm still in the, in the, I guess, understanding that this is going to get ran there we go yeah um how much did i risk on what on uj uh i did the 125 yeah 125 bucks I, I, is all i did yeah yeah um so yeah so chef jpy like nothing's changed i'm waiting i'm waiting down here and if you just follow market cycle right we had the distro you know i want to see that and I want to see us come into this area right here. All right. That's, that's ultimately what my goal is. That's where I want to buy Chef JPY. You know, I'm still holding the, the, the one order each from these two here. I have no desire to close them. You know, and we're, man, we're forever in a day. It, it's like we're at this point, I think 200 and, oh, geez, 400. We're 400 pips away from the buy area. So it is what it is. You know, not much I can do with it other than just sit on my hands. Uh, Euro GBP. So we, we took a buy out of Euro GBP this morning and it was a big fat break even, man. Uh, we did, we, we were up pretty nicely, did take some partials. Um, so we ended up breaking lower time frame structure here, right? Lower time frame BOS. Um, and this was our slingshot, right? This was our slingshot. So I'm actually still in that, that this was Monday's buy that we took. Um, super clean entry. Um, <laughs> Let's see, super clean entry on it. If you guys don't have it, go back and back test it. Um, I mean, all day long, this, this was, and this was like perfect timing too. Cause I woke up at like, I woke up at 6.30 in the morning and like, you could see, I didn't even mark this out. Like um, it was one of those, I threw it in my chat. I was like, Hey, anybody looking at EG? And you know, you could see this is your spring. Right. I had a uh, split entry. I had one off the 80 and I had one off the 50. So the 50 got popped. You know, this was a 2.2 .2 pip stop off the 50. Um, and then we just rallied off of it. 
so this morning I was actually looking, uh, I was looking for us to come back into this area, right? This is, this is where I wanted us to kind of trade back into. Um, but this morning we actually, hold on, let me get back out of replay mode. Where the heck is it? Ah, uh, man, this there it came right in there too. Look at that. Um, so this morning we actually were here and price price is actually because of what we did during frankfurt and breaking taking out these highs taking out these highs right here um i was going to give a look i said you know if we come back into this price action and give me an accumulation i'll take it so coming into there what was it 15 second i think right 15 second or five second oh it was 15 second yeah yeah so we had this this was our entry um you know, super clean type one on the seconds time frame, right? Here's your climax, here's your test, here's your test, here's your test in B, right? This could have been the spring, but we never broke. And then we get our spring. This is the low, low BOS, right? And, you know, what we did was we measured from here to here. This was the 50, this was the 80. Um, unfortunately, this happened so quick uh, cause we did it live while, while we were trading on zoom. Um, I ended up market executing. So I did want to take it off of here. Um, but by the time I market executed, it was actually right here at five, three, 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 five. So it could have been a, definitely a tighter entry, but it was still only a 0.9 pip stop loss. And, you know, as soon as we get the movement, boom, you know, I, I went break or I went reduce risk. Once we come back and then we make a new high, uh, I reduced, I came pretty much to break even. So on that break even, uh, my target for first partials was 85.50, right? And while we were on, while we were on our Zoom, um, you know, we were, we were right at like 49. And I've always said, you know, who cares about the one pip, you know? So we see that movement right here. You can see us right in this area here. And as we were doing this, just kind of lingering in this place, you know, I didn't care about the extra one and a half pips. I just took my partials. So, you know, I took some partials out of it. The, you know, sitting right here, we were, we were at a one to 16. So it did give a decent play and then you'll see. Yeah. So somewhere in here is where I took my partials and then you'll just see, we ended up kind of just fluttering out after that but it was still worth the entry. The schematic still allowed you to go to break even. It still provide, you know, and you could see the kind of accumulation that we saw, but we just never got the follow through. And then we ended up breaking even some, there you go. We ended up breaking even right there. So um, we did come back into the area that I was looking for price to come back into. Oh, hold on. We did come back into the area that I wanted us to come into, which was this area right here. Um, Yeah, there you go. So we came into that area. Um, unfortunately, we came into that area during Sydney session and I'm not trading Sydney session. So, you know, ideally what I want to see is if we do get continuation, right? If we do get some continuation, it, specifically if we, you know, depending on what we do, I mean, even if we get back up into this price action here, um, you know, we've broken order flow. I'd be looking for a pullback. And then at this point, I'm going to be looking for any kind of buying opportunity you know whether it's a schematic something i'm going to be looking for that uh i'm going to be looking for that evidence to get into the buys so i like the area we're in you know um i just need to see that sign of strength and then take it yeah i yeah, know it was it was a it was it was very quick um did i check had i i did my alert never went off though um yeah, we'll look at we'll look at CAD J. Yeah, my alert didn't go off. I wanted I wanted a schematic, but it just never gave it to me. So anyway, EG, e I'm looking for continuation. I mean, all we did was come back in. You know, like I said, I'm still holding buys out of here. I've taken the partials I wanted to take, um, and now I just want to see. Ideally, you know, at minimum, I want to see that break, come back, accumulate to go higher. You know, or we don't necessarily need to come back if we break this. And we reaccumulate, right? Like that. Now I'm going to play out of this and I'm going to take that higher. 
So we don't necessarily need to come back here. I'll play, I'll play a continuation play. All right. What about EJ? Do I trade it? Um, I trade EJ. I got nothing on EJ. Yeah, EJ's not, EJ's absolutely nowhere where I want to trade it right now. Um, is the yellow boxes and gray boxes the sessions? Uh, kind of, kind of, yeah, yeah. Yellow, the yellow is the start of Asian to the start of Frankfurt session. And then the gray box for me is my Frankfurt session. So, yeah. And if you, if you want, like, why, or, why is that specific to me? Then go through a couple pairs, back test them. And I'm, I'm almost positive you will, you will develop some opinions as to why I have that marked out. Uh, I'll tell you, it's, it's, it's definitely for a purposeful reason. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Is that a price? So mine is, like, I know a lot of people use sessions on chart. Sessions on chart uh, is this one here. And you can do it. Um, the one I have, I, I created, uh, I created in Pine Editor, but for some reason I cannot share it. When I go to share it, Trading View doesn't allow me to share it. I don't know why. Like I, I don't know if I need like a, I don't know. I don't know why I can't share it. They've 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 told me that I cannot share it. So it is what it is. Um, yeah. So EG looking for continuation, right? Um, ideally, and the only time I'm going to take the entry on EG is going to be London or New York. So I want to see at minimum, uh, let me, I'll delete that one and we'll move this one right there. So I, I just want to see that break. And like I said, ideally, you know, let's just say, you know, we're coming into Asian session now, right? Asian session is going to be starting. So maybe we get something like this, right? We break this high and from there, we do something like this, right? We trade back and we sweep Asian lows and then reaccumulate. Well, now this is my target. If I've got enough, if I've got enough confluence here, I'll set a limit order, you know, something here with the stop loss here, price comes back, I'll take it higher. You know, it, it's, it's going to be dependent upon what, what we get for price action here, but I will play a reaccumulation out of that. Okay. Um, I took this because of how it reacted off the 50 of the spring last night. It didn't form a schematic, I don't think. Uh, so maybe I jumped a bit. Uh, what you get, bro? Let me see. So you, oh, where you got in on it? Damn it, bro. Good job. I mean, good job with it. We were, we were looking, were you on the Zoom this morning? Because we were looking, I was looking for buys. I said I wanted buys on UJ. Um, you know, I wanted buys on it. I wanted buys all week on UJ. Or I'm sorry, on U US dollar Swiss franc. This is the only US dollar pair or US front side pair that I, I wanted to trade. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't interested in UCAD. Uh, in UJ, you know, I kind of was like mixed on, but definitely I was looking for buys. What, um, we'll, we'll go into it. You know what, let me go into it. When we get to, because uh, I, I had I had an order on it. You know, it's sitting in my, uh, Hold on, let me move all this. There we go. It's it's sitting in my damn pending, man. It just, it missed my order. Um, you got the first entry was slow on the second entry, but closed the first because it half looked like a distro. Uh, I got you, I got you. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, I mean, we'll, I'll, I'll dive into it. I, I saw, I, I was looking at today, man. I, I wanted to buy on it. Um, it just, it just didn't give me, it didn't give me anything to say, oh, I'm gonna throw full risk on, you know? Uh, anyway, so EG, I'm looking for the bullishness. Uh, Euro USD, listen, man. I call. I said I wanted uh, for those on the Zoom with me this morning, right? What did I say this was going to turn into? <laughs> I said I'm ex I'm expecting a redistro, right? All day long, I'm expecting the redistro because I'm bearish as crap on it. And um, ideally, what I wanted to see was I wanted us, I wanted this Frankfurt manipulation to get us up into here, you can see my alert was sitting here. I wanted us to take that high and we just never did, you know? Um, and of course now we took the low. So, you know, for me now, it's just a matter of wait for price action and tell me to get into this stupid trade. You know, e e EU is not my favorite um, USD cross to trade right now. I prefer GU because we've just been in a, We've been in a 27-day, 
and 18 pip range, right? Now, what do you guys, what kind of, what do you guys see? What kind of price action? If there was, what is there, you know, looking at this right here, what, what opinion can you form from it? Are we, are we going to see some bullish action or bearish action? What do you guys think? Bearish action? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm seeing, I'm, I'm, I'm most definitely going to be looking for some bearish action. And, you know, we can, we can already see the ice being built on this stupid thing. Right. Um, and if you compare it with DXY, right. Um, if we go over here to DXY, and this is why I've just been so bullish on this. Look at, look at DXY, right. Is does does any of this price action from like, we'll just say the middle, right. From the from the nineteenth, does any of this price action show us any weakness? Right? Do we see any weakness in this? No, I mean, right? There is absolutely no weakness. You know, when we look at what happened, it's just a complete market cycle, right? You could see the impulse of the order flow leg, right? We could see the distribution. We could see price giving a redistro, you could see the news, the manipulation in the news. And then what have we done from there? You know, I mean, ugly as that this is, pay attention. One thing you want to pay attention to is this. Let's just focus on this right here, right? Notice every time we come into demand, Notice, notice the reaction we get from here. And then notice all the top side stuff. So when you ask yourself who's in control, buyers, right? Buyers are in control right here. So yeah, I'm, I'm expecting this to continue higher. If I'm expecting that to continue higher, then of course, everything dealing I'm bad. I'm looking for shorts, man. I'm looking for shorts. So, you know, going back to EU. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it wasn't the cleanest setup, you know, um, really there was nothing that I wanted to get in out of this. Um, you know, I, I was, I was, I was more focused. I'll tell you this. I was more focused on GU. Right. Um, and you can see it in here. I mean, you do have just a very ugly type four schematic, right. But you know, when, when we broke and, and I did have an alert on this, but then I deleted it because it was just gone. So when we broke this, right, when we broke here, you know, I was ideally, I really wanted us to break the entire range, which we did, you know, but then I wanted us to come back to at least 50%. You know, this is, this is where I would have taken myself from, you know, you're, you're looking at a, you're looking at a about four and a half pip stop. We just, we don't even come there. You know what I mean? We don't even come in there. All we do is come right into the redistribution. That's all we did. You know, so we're not we're not getting our premium levels. You know, to sell off on, which just sucks. You know, um, yeah. I mean it, and then and then it just collapsed, and there was there was nothing to do after that. When you backtest, how do you discover things that not that people don't know about? Like, is it a? Um, Yeah. So I mean, like you, you have to, I'll tell you this, like, so when you're back testing, you have to always ask yourself, like, why did this happen? You know, what was significant about this, you know, and then it's all about attention to detail, right. You know, for me, like how I came and I, I I've started to, I'll tell you this, for those of you guys in, I am right. I've, I've noticed that a lot of people are starting to in educator wise are starting to use the 80% all of a sudden, uh, which is funny, but, um, you know, why, why did I, you know, how did I come? Cause the, the 50 is just something I've always done, right. The 50, but the 80%, how did I do that? You know, how did I come up with it? It was just, you know, I started to really pay attention to where the candles were coming into, 
you know, looking at the most voluminous candle and wait a minute, you know, why, where is this coming? Where's this coming? And I honestly just started with fibs and I started, you know, obviously I did the 71%. Nope. It wasn't that I did a 78, six, you know, I did the 88, six, you know, and then, you know, I kind of started playing around in numbers and then finally right at the 80 was it, you know, it probably took me maybe about a hundred charts to figure that out. So, you know, and then same thing, you know, like why, why did, why did we identify our Frankfurt open? You know, um, you know, that's just something that, that we, you know, we, we've really started a back test and we're like, you know, how many, how many times at what point, you know, on your 90th, your hundredth, your 200th chart of seeing the same crap where, you know, you have your accumulation being built during Asian Frankfurt sweeps, it breaks the high London comes back to mitigate and off to the races you go, you know, on your 200, 100 chart of, of seeing that you may want to implement that into your trading plan, you know? So that's just, that's just stuff that we do, you know, like when we're back testing, when we're looking at it, that's something that I'm looking to do with it. You know, um, do I use the volume profile? Yes. I don't use the view up. No, I don't, but I do the volume profile, but I don't use it as a, I, I, I do it to like, uh, to discredit price action pretty much. That's, that's all I care about. Yeah. Um, you use the 78, six. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, you'll get filled before the 80, you know, um, yeah. Uh, give me your opinion on this one. Sure. 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 What do you got, bro? What we got here? ACAD. Okay. Is this current price action or is this what you were looking to take? current uh, good luck with it bro <laughs> i don't trade in the yellow man and i mean just keep in mind if uh, well yeah so if you're calling that your secondary test and this your up thrust then this is the break you need not this because that's that's nothing right this is this is your this is your leg but i mean where where is this like what's the point of interest that it's in where's this distribution forming yeah yeah i mean i mean the, the schematic is clean i wouldn't necessarily say that's my preliminary supply though i don't know if i call that my preliminary supply um Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you this. I am, I am bearish on ACAD, um, but I, I prefer NZD CAD. I think this, the price action is just a little cleaner. Um, so anyway, all right. So I know we're getting off tangent now, or off task. Um, yeah. So on, on AU, I'm, I'm just going to be looking for shorts, you know, I'm going to play the continuation move. Um, you know, ideally what I want to play is, you know, even if we break this low here, you know, depending on what we, we play out of, you know, potentially something like this, like maybe, maybe we get Asian price action here, Frankfurt pops up maybe into this redistribution right here. Um, and then that's, that's an area I'd be looking at to short it, you know, if I'm correct with my higher time frame point is a previous H4 redistribution. Uh, all right, we'll take a look at it. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. A ACAD's the first one on my uh, my watch list, so we'll we'll take a look at it. Uh, but that's that's what I'm looking at. EU, right? I'm going to be looking for that. Uh, GU, GU, this stupid thing, man. Um, you know, we were. Let me see. Do I still have the markups? Yeah. So way back here, we were looking into this candle, this news candle. Sure enough, we get a distribution. Um, I'm still holding two orders. Where am I holding? I'm holding these two orders right here still. Um, you know, obviously I'm in from this one here from the middle of the month and I'm in from this one here as well. Um, and this price action is telling me nothing but just keep holding onto these cells. So I'm going to continue to hold them. And then you can see coming into this morning's price action, um, you know, this stupid thing just decided... So we, we came, you know, we came into the area, right? I was looking, ideally, I was looking out of here. 
to trade it. Right, I was looking to trade it. We did not come that high, right? We didn't come into it as, as, as much as I wanted it to, but we did distribute, right? We did distribute and there was nothing for me to take out of here, right? But when we redistributed, right? Immediately I'm playing out of our last unmitigated shakeout, right? So I had a limit order off of the 50%. You could see that's that's what I missed the limit order by. Price makes a new low. And then I was looking out of this area here for another position. And we just never came back. And the end of the day came. So I deleted my order. So unfortunately, GU just never gave me an entry. I would, but I would probably be looking. You know, I don't know if we're gonna have enough time into it though. I'd probably be looking to see. If we just rocket sideways during Asian, get a pop up during Frankfurt, London break it, and then we come back to mitigate, you know, that's that's something I'd be looking at right in there, you know, just continuing this order flow play. So, but I am I am looking for continuation shorts on GU, right? Um, could we could we come higher? Yeah, I mean we could, right? Just just keep in mind, I mean, like where where are we? You know, this this is still on the table right? We could still come back up into this area here. So it's just going to be, for me, it's all about just being on the chart during the right session time. And for me, that session time is going to be London or New York. You know, I'll, I'll pay attention where it's at after that. You know, you can see, you can see that this is the point of, of interest, right? This is the focal point. So you've got your, you've got your distro, you've got your redistro, you've got your redistro. This is what's maintaining supply at this point. And price comes in here, you know, we're targeting these lows. Okay, so that's that's kind of what I'm waiting on on GU. Um, NZD CAD, um, man, I'm still I'm still holding the cells on NZD CAD from up here, um, and I feel like I, I'm guessing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's the same thing as last week. If you were on the call last week, I'm looking out of this news candle. Uh, man, it's it's taken us a long time to get up there. So you know, I want to I want to get us. There we go. I want to get us into this price action right here. This this is where I want to take myself from. That's where I want to take myself from, right in there. And I think what was it, fifteen second? I think it was the fifteen second. Yeah, fifteen second. That's that's the candle I want to play. So I'm just oh no, 30 second. My bad. Maybe 30 second. Yeah, 30 second. So that's what I'm waiting on. You know, you can see the clear manipulation before the news to sweep. We go shoot up like 20 pips and then it just collapsed. So this is where they're in drawdown. X marks the spot. So I feel like I've been waiting a very long time for it to come back into there, but yeah, you know, that's, that's where I'm going to be playing. Um, do you think it's possible to be profitable with just limit orders if I'm at work and not able to be in front of the charts to follow price action as it happens? I mean, I, I don't know. You can, you can, you can back test like two months of price action and get, get like a, a, a base, you know, idea of it. I mean, I, I can tell you that you can, you know, um, I mean, that's, that's what my trading partner does, but are you prepared to wait four weeks for a trade? You know, are you prepared to, you know, to maybe only take two trades a month? Um, you know, if you are, then yeah, you know, someone who trades white cough, what time frame should you look for overall structure Time frame Like the number, uh, I don't have like a number. You know, because the, you know, like here, so for me, this is our leg, right? We broke here. This was your accumulation, your reaccumulation, your distro. So on the four hour, this is the leg, right? 9,300, we'll call it 9,300 is what maintaining my structure. But if I go to the weekly, is my intraday structure the same? Yes, 
9,300. It's still that break, right? If I go 30 minute, it's still the same structure, right? I mean, I can't fit it on there, but here, we'll pretend it. we'll just cut this in half. It's still the same structure, you know? So for me, it's, it's I have different structure legs. I have the lower time frame, the intraday, and then the higher time frame. you know? What's, what's maintaining, you know, it's, you, you got it for me, it's all about leg structure. It's not about the highs and lows. So, you know, I could care less about what this number is, you know, um, because like I said, the, the price action, the, the price action of that individual leg is going to be the same, whether I'm on a 15 minute or a daily time frame. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, like for me, it's not, you know, I don't, I don't say this is my 15 minute structure. I say, you know, where is, you know, like on G on GU, right? Let's look at GU. So, all right, hold on to me. So on GU, what's maintaining my lower time frame structure right here, right? But is that my four hour structure or is that my 15 minute structure? Doesn't matter. It's still my lower time frame structure right? That's my lower time frame structure. This is my intraday structure up here. That's my intraday leg. You know, and if we get a pullback into here, which I was hoping for, and we make a new low, well, now this becomes my lower time frame structure. This is still my intraday. That hasn't changed. You know, and then, you know, well, what's, what's my higher time frame? Well, there you go. I mean, what's, what's your higher time frame? We came into it, right? We came into it. This is your leg, you know? So, I mean, that's, that's, that's how I look at structure. You know, I mean, there's a thousand ways to skin a cat, right? I'm not saying my way is the right way. Um, you know, if, if your way works, great, do it, you know? Um, but I just, one of the things that I just got so frustrated at was I would, I would ask that same question. Well, what time frame do I take a break of structure on? Or what time frame do I do this? And I used to get the vaguest answers that, I, that could ever possibly be contemplated, you know? And then it finally took me just diving in and, and seeing, well, what the heck can, what can I make sense of? So that's, that's the sense I make out of it. Um, yeah, there you go. Legs maintain structure. Exactly. Yep. Um, that's what I do as well, but it takes a lot of back testing and risking. Um, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, no worries. So, um, work and trade, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'll be honest. Like, it sucks having to work and trade at the same time. Trust me. I, I, I mean, I did it for a little bit, and it was, it was definitely hard. Definitely hard. So now I kind of can enjoy, <laughs> now I kind of wake, I enjoy waking up when I want, grabbing my cup of coffee, jumping on the charts, um, you know, doing my thing. So, oh, that sucks, man. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I yeah, yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> yep. I'd, I'd sit in my car, you know, I'd, I'd be sitting in my car at work computer computer on my uh on my passenger side buckled in you know or i'd have my ipad i'd have my ipad and trying to trying to mark out charts and all that so uh how did you get to the stage where you stopped working um how did i get to that stage um yeah my 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 equity in my account did this <laughs> That's, that's how I got to that stage. You know, I, I, you know, honestly, I got to the point where I was consistently making every month more than I was making at my full-time job. So, you know, it, it was, you know, I, I told myself, you know, when I, when I first started to really get consistent trades and I really started to build, build my account. Now I kind of, I'll tell you this, what, what I would have done differently um, 
is no one ever taught me, or maybe, maybe just prop firms weren't that big when I first started trading, but no one ever told me about prop firms until I was probably in my going on my third year of trading. Right. Um, so, you know, my dumb self listened to everybody and said, Oh, well just fund your you know broker account with $250. You know, if you follow this compound plan in a year, you'll be a millionaire, you know, which is the, biggest lie you'll ever hear. I mean, that's, it's like, it's, it's, it's right there with the flat earth kind of thing. Um, there, yeah, you're not going to make a million dollars in, in a year. I mean, maybe you can, but it's just, I, I don't see it possible. Um, you know, so yeah, I mean, I, I built my account to, you know, a, a pretty good size. And like I said, I was consistently every month making what I needed to survive. Once, once I got to the point where, I had enough of a nest egg and I truly understood risk management. I truly understood my market structure. You know, um, you know, like a lot of you guys always ask, you know, why do I only risk a quarter percent? Because that's all I want to lose. I don't want to lose more than that. You know, I don't care. For me, it's not how much money I win, it's how much money I lose. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm perfectly fine. You know, I think, um, what was it? February of this year was my worst month. I only won 36% of my trades, but I still cleared like seven and a half percent profit for the month and seven and a half percent profit, you know, on a seven figure account is a pretty good payday, you know? So that's, that's kind of what I would, you know, you know, how, how do you transition from working full-time to being a, a full-time trader? Yeah, that master. Yeah, I'll tell you right now, Matt, just like Mark Douglas freaking preaches, man, but master risk management, master the art of probability, master your inner self in understanding your own mindset and psychology. And, you know, take the damn trades. It's that simple. You know, we're our own worst enemy. You know, we we overanalyze, we underanalyze, we, you know, we we trick ourselves into not taking a trade and then we we foolishly, you know, chase a trade and then take a stupid loss, you know, um, you know, you, you just, you, you almost have to be robotic, you know, I mean, my, you know, for, for me, like, I don't have someone, I think someone once asked me, like, do you, can I, can I get a copy of every one of your confirmations? And I was like, man, I, I, I don't even have every one of them written down because they're all scenario based, you know, if this, this, and this happened, then I'll do this. But if that, that, and this happened, then I'll, I'll do something else, you know, or I'll, 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 I'll manage it this way, or I'll do something. And all of that just comes from experience, you know, tr you know, you know, trial and error, um, you know, going back and reassessing how you took specific trades, how you manage them, you know, where you took your profits, where you should have taken your profits. Like all of those things are things I write down and, and analyze, you know, like when you go back and you journal, like what, what do you do when you journal? Do you just put input the numbers like a, like a data recorder or do you actually go in there and analyze your trade? Well, why the hell did I take this loss? You know, or if I won this trade, how can I made that trade better? You know, how could I've managed it better? Uh, those are, those are honestly the things that, you know, you, you really start to develop a professional mindset and, and treat this like a business. You know, I mean, that's overall, that's what it is. This, this to me is a business, you know, um, I'm not, I'm not in the business of flipping accounts, you know, um, you know, I know a lot of people do that. I don't flip accounts. I don't, for me, flipping an account is, is not what I want to do because just as easy as I could flip an account, I can lose the account. And there's no point in me flipping a $5,000 account when on a quarter percent risk, I'm making more than that. You know, what's the point in, in over leveraging or trying to flip that account, you know, just build your account to a reasonable size. And I mean, some of you guys that are trading prop firms and you've, you you've got multiple accounts, you know, some of you guys that are trading like 300,000 in equity, 500,000 in equity, a 10% month for you, right? 50 K that adds up pretty quickly, you know, do that for six months you, and, and, and put half of your profits right? Half of the 300K you've made, put that into your broker account. You've already, you're already amassed 150K account without even taking a trade on that account, you know, and just keep building that, you know, the, the, the biggest, I'll tell you right now, like once, once you get like the mid five figures, you know, when you're sitting 40, 50K in an account and you're consistently making profits, you know, 
you're, you're quickly going to hit six figures. And when you hit six figures, you're very quickly going to hit seven, you know, a hundred K account. I mean, th- like I said, those of you guys trading these prop firm accounts, a hundred K account, 10% is 10 K. Right. You know, I mean, and, and you just keep compounding that uh, you're very easily going to just keep ama- amassing a, a, a pretty decent, you know, account size. Yeah. No funding is the way, man. I'm, I'm telling you, I wish, I wish, I would have known that, bro, because I'll tell you right now, I wouldn't have been that idiot. $250 account, you know, making my $14 this month I made, you know, yeah, come on, man. That, you know, what it does is it just, it creates an atmosphere for you to have to over leverage. You know what I mean? Because you're sitting to yourself and you're, you, you, you know, every, you know, like, listen, we're our own worst enemy. You can't sit there on your first week of trading where you made $36 on your account and you're like, this is it. This is the way. This is, this is, this is the start of my new future where I'm going to retire myself in six months, 36 bucks ain't doing that, you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, listen, I mean, there, there are plenty of prop firms out there nowadays and it, it, they, they truly are the way to do it because that's if, and of course, listen, you know, you've, you've blown six accounts. You, you can't, you know, you can't pass a, a FTMO trial, you know, to, to be consistent, don't go out there and buy a challenge and just say, Oh, let me try to pass the challenge. You know? Um, I mean, there's, there's, there's a couple guys that I know that took six, seven, eight months of really demo trading of really learning what they were doing and what do they do? Then they go and take a challenge and woohoo, they pass it, you know? And now, now they're starting to make decent profits. You know, like I said, you're trading a 200 K account, and you make 10% a month, guess what? After your profit split, you're at 16,000 take home. You know, that's, that's, I'll tell you right now, that's, that's more money than I made in my full-time job, you know, in a month. So it's, it's definitely worth it. All right, hold on. My bad. I went on it. I went on a, on a little rip here. Let me catch up. Um, uh, how much was what? My bad, bro. I didn't, I don't know what you're talking about. How much was what? What, what off limits or wait, what off limits or schematics? Cause you, you, like you said, it's hard. What off limits? I don't know what you're talking about, bro. What off limits? My bad. Um, yeah. What trading firm do I use? Uh, FTMO and the, and then prop trading. Yeah. That's what I use. Um, all right. Hold on. How many legs do you look at? How many legs? If my wife's asking just two, but um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the leg that's maintaining that structure point. That's, that's the, the only legs I care about are the ones maintaining the structure point. Um, yeah, I feel like if it's not a break of structure, it's a continuation. If I, yeah, yeah, exactly. If it's, if it's not a break of structure, right. Exactly. Yeah. It's listen, it's easier to trade the continuation move than it is the reversal. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah, there you go. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is the best approach to Forex learning? Um, man, I don't know. The best approach. Um, hold on. All right, hold on. Give me a sec, guys. Hold on. Two seconds. All right. Sorry. I had to get to my water. Um, I'm also, I'm almost to the point where I want to build a crypto mining operation, to have some passive income before I pay for a challenge. Um, yeah, man, I'll, I'll tell you, it's, it's nice. It's nice getting your, you know, your crypto dropped into your, you know, into your accounts, man. It's, it's especially knowing 
you know, like I said, I, I'm making 0.1 Ethereum, which isn't much. I mean, I know people that are making tons more than that, but think about it. 0.1 Ethereum is about 400 bucks. I'm making that just on my Ethereum rig a week, a week, you know, 400 bucks every week for probably like $7 of power, you know, that, that adds up pretty quickly, you know, especially after you've already um, broken even on your equipment. You know, and then everything else, you know, like Ravencoin, man, Ravencoin. I, I, um, I'm, I'm solo mining Ravencoin for this month because January 10th is the halving and I'm trying to get a big push into it. Well, I saw the block yesterday. So a block, I got 4,950 freaking uh, Ravencoin in one block. So, which is this right here is about, you know, like 450 to $500. So I made that in one block. So even if this is the only block I made this month, that's still worth it for me, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, NZD CAD, for example. All right, hold on. NZD CAD, for example, what? Uh, how did you figure out your trading style and the system you stick to? Uh, trial and error. So the legs, yeah, yeah. So on the legs, right? What's here, I'll, I'll go back to that question, but on the legs, what's, what's my leg, right? So higher time frame leg, right? What is my higher time frame leg? So we are, where, we in, where are we in control of, right? We are in control of supply, right? Why? Because we can see that price was walking itself up. We have our distribution. This distribution, right? If this is, if this is our high, this is the leg, right? And we broke that leg. So we are from a higher time frame. This is our higher time frame leg, right? So if I'm gonna sell, if I'm looking for a sell, I'm gonna sell from either the slingshot or from previous supply, right? Which could be this redistribution here, uh, this distro here, or the main distro that is controlling it. From an intraday perspective, right? From an intraday perspective, where is our structure point, right? So our leg, you know, you could see that, you know, we had an accumulation into a distribution, that distribution made a new low. So this is maintaining supply. We have a just horrific looking accumulation, but it is what it is, right? We have an accumulation that breaks that high. So now at this point, from an intraday perspective, we are bullish what do we see market cycle right you can see the distro that comes back into prior demand right accumulation the reaccumulation into our distro so from here this is maintaining my intraday structure well we broke it here so this is maintaining intraday structure for me this is my intraday leg and then from a lower time frame perspective right this is now maintaining lower time frame because this is my lower time frame leg all right so these are the only legs i care about Hopefully that clears it up. Um, so how did I figure out the trading style? So trial and error, you know, I started my first, uh, my first trading style was the old harmonic scanner, you know, and, you know, I, I, I learned how to put the harmonic on my, my chart. I learned how to trade it. Uh, I learned how to put a lot of losses in my journal with it. So that was cool. Um, but I just never saw consistency with it. Uh, and then from there, I went to pitchforks. Uh, I had success with pitchforks, but just not, not what I wanted, right? Uh, and then from there, I tried break and retest, which I was, I'll tell you right now, I made six figures on break and retest, but I felt like it was, uh, man, I, I, I had to work for it. You know, I was taking 30 trades a week, you know, and I wanted, I wanted, I, I guess, at that point, I was a more experienced trader and I wanted to find a more or a less stressful way of trading, but I wanted to get better understanding of what the market was doing. So I, I guess I wanted to be a better analyst, right? And then by default, when I became a better analyst, I became a better trader because I actually understood what the chart was telling me and how to read the price action, you know? And then from there, um, you know, I kind of, I, I kind of fell into learning Wyckoff um, and then just went all in on it, you know? And then from there, you know, it's just not Wyckoff that I trade, right? I mean, I, I, I incorporate, you know, obviously because of Wyckoff, you have to have an understanding of supply and demand. 
Um, but you also have to understand, you know, very clean market cycle, market structure, and then cause and effect with it. So that's kind of where, where I did it. Um, how do you tell that? No, oh, shoot. You know what? Hold on, man. Give me a sec. Um, uh, if you can't manage a 10K demo, you have no business doing it. Exactly. Yeah, you don't. You don't. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, listen, I'm not going to talk bad about I am. I mean, I definitely, I definitely learned the basics from I am, um, definitely a lot of good information there. What do you do for trading psychology? Um, live and die by Mark Douglas, pretty much, you know? Um, so I mean, there's, there's a lot of, I'll tell you this, you do not have to listen to a trading psychology podcast. There are wh wh whatever you relate to, you know, um, whatever you relate to, there's always, or there will always be some sort of mindset um, understanding that you can learn from, develop your own as, and continue in the process, right? Um, you know, there, there are, I mean, for those of you guys that are, um, those of you guys that, I'm trying to see how I can word it. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's like, I'll tell you right now, Mark Douglas and then Lieutenant Colonel Grossman, right? For those of you guys in the, that, that have been in the military, I'm sure you've, you've heard of Lieutenant Colonel Grossman. Um, you know, I actually had the opportunity of meeting him and he spoke at a dinner in Germany when I won an award uh, after I came back from Iraq. Um, and, you know, some of the things that he talks about, I, I still, um, still resonates with me and I still incorporate that into my trading. Um, you know, it's, it's whatever you need to, to get to or get over the hump to understand um, you know, to understand what your goal is, you know, most of you guys that know how I trade, I'm very, um, it's all about organization. You know, I'm very organized. I have everything is step by step. Everything is almost, you know, I talk about it all the time. You almost want to be robotic, right? No emotion in the trading. Um, you know, it's, it's very, you know, have, you know, one of the things I do is I always have an out, you know, um, a, a great example, like this morning we were, we were, getting into this Euro GBP trade. And those of you guys that were on the call with me, what did I do? I said, well, I'm not going to sit here and babysit the trade. It's either going to hit my damn stop loss or we're going to get the, we're going to get the boof alert and we're going to be able to protect the trade. And that's it. I went on and started looking at the other trades. You know, um, I know a lot of people that would be stressed out of their mind because they're in a trade and, and prices just like hovering at their, at their entry point, you know? So, you know, I would say, you know, definitely explore. Don't, don't limit yourself to just these, you know, you know, quote unquote trading psychology books. Cause you don't need to just do that. You know, I mean, you can, you can listen to what's his name. Jocko has a, um, if you guys don't know who Jocko is, Jocko was a, was actually a SEAL team five commander, uh, got retired. He has his own podcast and, you know, I was a big, um, I was a big, military guy, you know, I, I did a lot of years in the, in the military, uh, a lot of it in special forces and operations. And, you know, it, it always puts me in a really good mindset because I remember doing half the crap that I did. And, you know, and, and, and I always talk about how trading is the hardest thing I've ever done. And some of the crap that I've done, I can't believe I've survived. Um, but trading by far surpasses the mental and the emotional toll that it takes on my body, you know, so sometimes, you know, I, you know, and I've said it before, sometimes I just got to check out, I've got to go do a vacation, you know, um, I've got to go, you know, I've got to go hit the gym. I've got to go for a walk. I got to go for a swim. I got to go do something else to get my mind off of trading and re, re, rejuvenate myself. You know, one of the things I don't do is on Saturdays, I don't turn on my computer. You know, I don't look at a chart, you know, that's what the week is for. You know, for me, the week is my grinding time. You know, that's when I may stay up 
you know, late to, to finish my journals. That's when I, I get up early for my preparation. That's when I, you know, organize my whiteboard, organize my charts, organize my journal. You know, the week is when I do that. The weekend is my time. So yeah, well, hopefully that kind of answered it. Uh, yeah, yeah, here, hold on. I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up for you. Yeah, yeah, hold on. Give me a sec, let me, yeah, here, give me a sec. It's this right here. So he, he does a lot of like leadership and development stuff. Um, yeah, just type in Jocko podcast. That's him right here. This is him. So if you guys, you guys know, I'm sure most of you guys have heard of Chris Kyle, right? Uh, he was in the, the, you know, the main movie character of uh, American Sniper, right? That was his CO. That was his CO. Yep. That was his CO. So I actually, um, when I was in Iraq, uh, I actually ran into, I, we worked with that SEAL team. Um, so I, I honestly don't remember Chris Kyle one bit. I don't, I mean, I do remember Jocko uh, because I, I remember, um, <laughs> I remember he, he liked, uh, he liked a lot of sugar and a lot of cream in his coffee. Uh, so when we were having coffee, like we used to always give him grief, like, you know, you want, you want some coffee and that sugar, but um yeah, I mean, that whole SEAL team was over there with us. Um, so anyway, yeah, just here, I'll, I'll throw the podcast in. I listen to this all the time. I listen when I go to a walk. I listen when I, you know, actually, hold on. Let me do it like that. My bad. There we go. Um, you know, I listen to it at the gym, but it, it's, it, it does when you listen, and he always has a lot of guests on. Um, you know, it just, it helps you get over the hump, man. It helps you, it helps you, you ever listen to motivational stuff for those of you guys that like to work out and stuff. You ever listen to some like a motivational speech or a motivational, um, you know, inquiry, and then immediately you get up and you're like, you know what, man, I'm going to go freaking deadlift some weights, man. Or I'm going to go over there. I'm going to squat. I'm going to freaking, you know, bench press. I'm going to, I'm going to push something out. It just gets you motivated. And that's honestly, sometimes like you, you need that pick me up. And it gives you so much clarity. You know, you get on the charts and you're like, no, I'm not doing this. No, hell no, I'm not taking that. You know, I mean, there's sometimes how many times, you know, some of you guys on the call when you're like, hey, Mike, what do you think about this trade? I'm like, I'm not taking that. It's a type two on a Monday. All right, no way I'm taking a type two on a Monday, you know? Um, so yeah, all right, cool, cool, cool. My bad guys. Um, um, I got, I've got, you know, I, I got some more iron in me today. So, you know, my blood levels are up, you know, I'm, I'm full energy now. I'm not, I'm not dragging butt anymore, man. So, um, hold on, let's see extreme. Yep. Extreme ownership is a great book. It is, um, uh, <laughs> you would think, man, you would think actually, I'll tell you what, man, he was, he was actually a big tea guy in the afternoon, man. We used to, uh, <laughs> we used to bring tea bags with us that we got from a bunch of, uh, actually a bunch of SAS and a bunch of Kiwi special forces guys. Uh, we got a bunch of different teas and, uh, we were, we were, yeah, we were making tea in the afternoons, you know, nothing, nothing better than an ice cold glass of iced tea in the afternoon in the middle of a, you know, 140 degree Iraqi sun. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, well, yeah, yeah, we, we gotta, we gotta get back on the charts. Hold on. Um, is it important to stick to a plan when you feel there is a wrong, tr when there is a wrong trade? Um, well, what do you mean by stick to the plan? You know, like, like the bias or like your trading plan? You know, I mean, I'll tell you this: don't marry the bias. You know, if if you know, let's just say. Let's just say when, you know, we have, we have this distro, right. And we're looking for shorts and we, you know, I'm, I'm looking. So when price, when price is here, hold on. And maybe hopefully, hopefully this answers it, but all right. So when we get this, right, we're looking for shorts, right. we got a distro, we got a confirmed distro, right. At what point do I stop looking for, for sales? when we break this, right? I will continue to look for sells all the way up until we break that high right there. So for me, my trading plan tells me that I can risk 1% a day, right? If I, if I lose 1%, I shut it down for the day. 
So if NZD CAD is the only thing I'm trading today, that gives me a minimum of three trades. Now, if I want to split it up, if I want to maybe, you know, maybe go a little less aggressive and throw, you know, half risks on them, then that gives me, you know, you know, anywhere between six and eight trades I can take, you know, but for me, the minute this is the line in the sand, you know, we trade above that, that's it pop smoke, I'm done, find another landing zone, you know, you're gonna have to go to another chart, figure something out over here. Because, you know, the bias is done, the, the cells are over, we're, we're now we're now bullish, you know. Um, so hopefully, hopefully, what's up, Sam? How you doing, man? Um, hopefully, that makes sense. You know, um, like, don't marry the bias, you know, and, you know, don't, uh, you know, there, there's a reason that, you know, like, if this was an accumulation that I'm playing, right? There's a reason my stop loss is here, because if my stop loss gets hit, we're no longer in an accumulation. We're in a redistro. We're selling, you know. So, you know, don't don't marry the bias. Don't you know? Don't just keep buying and buying. You know, don't buy the dips. Don't buy the dips. You know, I mean, that's that's it's you know, follow structure, follow what the chart's giving you. Follow the price action. You know, the price action is so key. You know, um, we did, I did a training, what was it last Thursday or the Thursday before I did a training where we kind of just like dove into lower time frame price action. And we even went down on the one second and even on the one second, you know, I know a couple of the newer guys that I, I've got in my group, you know, on the one second, if I would, if I were to hide this thing that said one second and hide up here, you know, you wouldn't even have known that it was the one second because the price action was so clean and understanding what's going on on there. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you, man, it's it's easy to get blown up. You just sit there. But trading, <laughs> trading, you got to put some effort, man. You know, you've, you've got to really deal with, uh, you know, there's there's so many different aspects of trading that people they, they, they short sell it. You know what I mean? Um, there, there, there's so many, not only just like the psychology and mindset, but listen, anybody can, get, can find an entry, right? I mean, it takes some, it takes some experience. It takes some talent to find your entry. But for me, one of the things I say is the hardest thing to do is the management of that trade. You know, I mean, nothing against those of you guys that trade like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to close out at a one to three, a one to five or a one to 10, whatever it is, whatever that number is. You know, if that's how you want to trade, no, no issues with it, you know, do it. But for me, I'm just, just because I hit a one to five, I'm not going to close the trade. You know, if I, if I got, you know, if we get this distribution, wherever the hell the distribution was, hold on. We, we get the distribution right on NZD CAD from, there we go. We get this distribution here. We get that entry, right? Where am I, at least where am I taking it to, to this low? You know, I don't care if that's a one to five or a one to 100, right? Um, you know, I know, I know I'm taking a, a low here and I know I'm taking a low here, right? So, and that's why, you know, like this, this trade, I don't even know what we're at. What are we at? This trade was a one to 128, right? And when, when we broke this low, right, at 85.80, that's where I took my third partial. And now I'm just holding that one order, you know, because nothing about this is, is bullish. So, all right, man, have a good one. Um, uh, do you ever get, do you ever get tempted to close trades early because you trade in areas of volatility? No, no, no. I mean, listen, if, if, you know, take your partials, I, 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 I'm always, I'm a firm believer in partial out, partial often take your profits, right? Um, don't, don't feel, I'll tell you right now, like, Yes, can you can you work on your management? You can, but don't feel bad because you close out of a trade, right? Like you know, um, I know I know NZD CAD's a sore subject with a lot of people, so I won't, <laughs> I, I you know I, I will go I won't go into it, but we'll go GU right um, on GU right? Like let's say where is it at? Here we go on GU. Right. Say, say you caught this entry right here. Right. You caught this entry and all you wanted to do, you know, say you bring it up 
and you're at Asian lows, you're at a one to eight and price starts acting weird. And you're like, you know what? I'm going to close. All right. So you close. Guess what? On whatever I risked, what was, you know, $125 I risked, I made at this point, you would have made 1,059. That's still 1,059 more than you had before you got into this trade. So take your profits, you know, now go back and ask yourself, why did I trade? Was it because of fear? Was it an emotional response? Or did I genuinely see a reason to close out the trade? You know, and if you see a reason to get out of the trade, now that's where you can start building on your trading and you say to yourself, okay, I need to learn to take partials. I need to leave a runner. And if I'm in a cell and I see, let's say, let's say that you, you see this happening. Come on, grab it. There we go. You see this happening over here, right? Okay. No worries. You see that happening. There we go. Uh, there we go. You see that happening over here. All right. Hedge it. Take the buy, right? Instead of closing out of your cell, get into a buy, work it up, and then you can take some more profits. You can actually double, you know, make double the money on it, but hedge it because guess what? If the hedge fails, you're still in the cell. So the stop loss, if you took $125 loss, guess what? You're, you made it back in your cell. So now you have to worry. Now you have to incorporate or, or learn the hedging process. You know, that, man, that trade management is the, is the real deal. That's, that's where the money is made strictly on the management side of it, understanding when, when, when to hedge positions, when to break even, when to reduce risk, you know, um, you know, that's, that's, that's what you work on in the lab, man. That's, that's, you know, when, you know, when everybody else is, you know, out there, you know, hanging out or whatever, and you're, you're stuck at your computer freaking buried in, in binders and in charts and stuff. That's, that's where you're doing it. Because that's where you're going to make the that's where you're going to make the dough, man. That's that's where you're going to make, you know, the overall, you know, the equity curve make do that. All right. Um, okay. Let's see. Can you please explain the difference between structure and order flow? Um, yeah. So. Any question as to why this is our leg, right? Does everybody understand that this distribution here is maintaining our leg? Uh, hold on. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, okay, right. So this is our leg. Now, follow your market cycle, right? So you've got your distribution, you've got a redistro, 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 right? Remember redistros and reaccumulations are continuation moves, right? They cannot be structure points. So everything in between is order flow, right? All of this in here. So if this is our, if this is our structure point, if this is what's maintaining structure, then this, is our order flow, right? This is not structure, it's order flow. Same thing, you know, order flow has many, many shades, right? It's, it's like, a, it's like a, an ogre, right? Uh, it's got different layers, like an onion as well. This is all order flow. Boom, 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 right? This is all order flow, right? And then boom, we break order flow and then we come back and then we break, or, you know, we make a new high on order flow. This is all order flow, right? Does that make sense? Hopefully that does. Um, yeah. Order flow is everything in between your structure point. One example of how you trade type two accumulations and distros. One example of how I do it. Well, how I trade it is pretty simple. Uh, so like, let's just say, uh, what was one that we had? Uh, was it... Uh, was it EU? EU is a type two, right? Yeah, so here you go. Here's your, here, well, no, that's more like a type one, but here you go. So here's your type two, right? Here's your type two. So when I see the type two, I just come over here and I go to a different chart. That's one way to how to trade it. Yep. 
for, for me, it's not worth it. You know, it's just not worth it. I, <laughs> I mean, where's, where's my journal? Let me see. Hold on. Give me a second. Let me pull, you know, like why, why don't I like to trade type twos? Hold on. Let me pull up my journal. Uh, <laughs> journal crypto TMO. Let me do this one. <laughs> yeah, give me a sec. It's taken a while to open it up. I think I'm all caught up, right? Uh, basically order flow is what makes up each leg. Yes. And just, it's not always right, but just think of it like this lower time frame structure is typically intraday order flow. Intraday structure is typically higher time frame order flow. Right. So, you know, that's, that's ultimately, you know, what it is. Um, give me one second. Give me one second. I'm just waiting for this thing to open up. Um, Okay, here we go. Sorry, I got it now. So I'm just gonna screenshot this and then I'll pull it up. Here we go. So this is why, I'm gonna make it big. This is why I don't trade type twos. Here's my journal for the year. Where is it at? Uh, Why can I not do this? I'm freaking. There we go. There we go. Damn. All right, finally. So this is why. Here's my journal, right? Hold on. There we go. Here's my journal for this year. So why do I not trade type twos? Because accumulation type twos, I am negative 4.4% profit. Type two distributions, oh look, pretty, pretty, pretty accurate, negative 4.84%. But yet my type one accumulations, type one distros, you know, are, are definitely worth it. So, I mean, just look at it. I mean, it's not, for me, it's not worth it. You know, for me, if I get a, you know, I guess I should have screenshotted the rest of the page, but for me, if I get a type one, right, on a, on a, I'm sorry, on a Thursday or a Friday during New York session, game on, game on, because that, that is the highest probability trade that I'm going to get, you know, so, but yeah, this, this right here, this is, this is year to date for 2021 for me. So you know, combined type ones, you know, I've made about 133% profit this year on just type ones, where I've made negative 8% on type twos. So guess what? If I don't take, if I don't take a trade on a type two, I don't lose a type two. So I'll just continue to play the type ones. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Okay. All right. So uh, moving on, man. Uh, damn, my wife's going to kill me. Moving on. Let's see. So three drives or nothing. Uh, three drives in a UTAD or a spring is what I need. Three drives, UTAD or a spring. Yeah. Yeah, because just a three drive schematic is just going to be a tight two. So, um, you know, update. I mean, listen, I'm, 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 I'm bearish on silver. I'm still holding, you know, big shout out to Thomas, bro, because he's the one that was on this, man. Uh, I'm still holding from here. And, you know, I'm sitting, what are we sitting at? Somewhere in the neighborhood of like a one to 60. Um, you know, last week, I know a bunch of, a bunch of people were looking for buys out of this. Um, you know, I pretty much said that we were going to, I was pretty confident we were going to break it. We did. Um, I will say that out of order flow, right out of order flow, this is, this is my point of interest right here. You know, um, we've engulfed it here. So I'd be looking for price to come up in it. And if we get a schematic, I will play order flow out of it because we're bearish right? I will play order flow, but I need a schematic to take, right? So I'm actually going to throw an alert up here too. Hold on. Uh, there we go. So yeah, I mean, ideally, I'd, I'd want to see, you know, so this, this is your manipulation let's go 15 minute let me see some do we come back into that 15 oh that's close yeah i mean ideally i, I just want to see a schematic in here right we get a schematic somewhere in this neighborhood here um, i'll play order flow on it you know but you know th this is right you could see that this this is all just order flow this is not structure right um, so I, ideally, yeah, this is, I, I do like it. Um, type one or type two, the, the type of distribution or accumulation, right? So essentially, essentially a type one has a minimum of three drives and then they shake out either a UTAD or a spring where a type two does not, right? A type two doesn't. Type two would just be, you know, essentially that, you know, typically you'll see them as like, triple bottoms, triple tops, you know, the W's, the M's, right? Um, where when you see the spring, right, that sweeps, that's your, that's your manipulation, that's your type one. And then obviously we just need the break. So, yeah. So on silver, I mean, I'll, I'll give it a look out of here, but ideally, you know, I'd, I'd prefer for us to come back up into some more premium pricing for me to sell it, you know? Um, and then, of course, the glorious NASDAQ, this bad boy right here, man. So, you know, I, I, I was talking on Friday. I was looking for shorts. We caught a decent short, took some profits, ended up breaking even on it. Um, you know, and then Monday did the same. Uh, and then today, um, you know, today I wanted to look for shorts and it just didn't give us, give us one. So this was uh, Friday's trade. This was Friday's trade that we took. Uh, really clean entry. You know, we had the manipulation, came right into the 80%. I took partials here and here, and then, you know, break even it was going into Friday. Um, where do I think NASDAQ, NASDAQ's going? Well, take a look at the chart. All you got to do is look at it from this view. Where do you think we're going? Right? I mean, I don't know where we're going to end, you know, but where do we think we're going? I mean, I'd be looking at that reaccumulation. I guess I, I should make it a reaccumulation. I'd be looking at that reaccumulation, or I'd be looking right here. That's that's short term. That's where we're going. Yeah, you know, that's where we're going. Um, you know, and you know th that's our leg. If you look at it, right, this. So you know, we had like this to that to that. That's our leg. You know. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for continuations. You know, we, um, where was market open? Yeah, this was market open. You know, I, I wanted to see, I wanted to see us come back. You know, I was even looking in this area here, but 
it just, it didn't give me an entry, you know, like it, it, it popped in and then just collapsed. So, you know, what I want to see, you know, I don't trade this outside of New York session. Um, the entry here is sitting at a one to 44. Um, you know, I've taken some partials at it. It was, it was a really clean distro. Um, yeah, really clean distro. This was, this was my entry here. That was my entry, uh, really clean distro out of here. You know, you could see the manipulation. Um, that's, that's where I wanted to play. I don't know. So you guys, you guys saw this morning, right? Like, uh, we were going over this, look at the 15 second. Do you see how this doesn't break, right? That doesn't come down. But now if I go, Oh, look at that. They, they changed it again, man. You guys saw this morning, right? Like that, that wick didn't come all the way down. Anyway, this is where I use the volume profile because that, that wick doesn't, oh, that wick doesn't happen. You know, if you come in here, use your volume profile. Do you notice how, let's go 15 second. Do you notice how, where's your last order? Your last order is right here, right? So do we break? Yes, we do. This, there's no orders there. This is, this is not price action. So <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's ultimately not something I'd be looking to play out of. All right. Uh, so that's, that's why I took this entry. Really clean entry. And I was actually looking for a re-entry out of this super clean distro right here, that being our UTAD. Um, and she came into it. The only issue I had was we hadn't broken that low. We came so close. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for continuations. Uh, keep going south with it. I'm going to see where we're at tomorrow morning. Typically, that's what I do. I'll look to see what happens during London. Um, I can tell you that this needs to be mitigated. This re redistribution, that needs to be mitigated. So we potentially could come back up into here, distribute, send this down. All right, uh, that's what I'm looking at. And since we're on NAS, we'll just go through all three of them. You know, SPX, same shenanigans, man. Um, you know, I was looking here, here is this morning when we were here, I was looking for us to same thing, come into this price action, right? Which mitigated this redistribution, which mitigated that redistribution, you know? So when we come here, actually, when we come in here, this is the, this is that first redistribution. This was market open on Friday. I'm, I'm sorry, on Monday, this was market open, super clean redistribution that we come into, right? That we come into and mitigate. So redistro, what's this? A redistro, here's your distribution, right? And what do we do? We tap into it here out of that redistro and send this down. So this X marks the spot for me. This is where I want to see us distribute. So that's where I'm going to be looking for the shorts. Um, same thing, you know, look, look up on the intraday time frame. Where's SPX going? Right? SPX for me. Right? SPX for me. Here's your distro. We've come back into supply. We've distributed. So I have every intention of taking it below here. And, you know, right in there is where I'm looking, right? Right in there is where I'm looking. So we'll see if it happens, you know, but I'm going to continue to short it. And same thing. I mean, listen, US 30, I've had this marked out for a very, very long time. And I'll tell you now, if this gets taken, right, if that gets taken, we are seeing a 10,000 point drop. We are coming down to like 27, 27, five. We're coming into this, right? Because this is the slingshot that broke this high, right? So when we look at, when we look at our leg, right? Higher time frame leg, this is our higher time frame leg. This is the reaccumulation that broke the high, right? So 27, potentially could be the area we come down to.
So that's that's kind of what I'm looking at with uh, with indices. All right. Um, moving on over, uh, U.S. dollar, Swiss franc. Again, I was looking bullishness on it. Right. I wanted to see a buy. Uh, specifically, I wanted to see a buy in here. Right. Um, you know, I talked about that lower time frame accumulation that I wanted to see out of it. Uh, what you get, Tom, out of here? You. Oh, okay. I see what you got. I see what you got. Okay. So you had your you had your accumulation and then you just took it, I'm guessing out of 50% of this, right? Hold on, let's see. Let us see. Hold on. Uh, she came back into 80, didn't she, man? Look at that. She came back into 80. All right. So you know that this has been mitigated. Let's see. So LPS, LPS, LPS. What are we talking? Like a five minute? No, six minute? Seven, eight. That's no, all the same candle. <clears throat> you would have thought it was the four minute, but I guess it's not. Yeah. Measure it. I'd measure all the way out. There's your 80%. Is that where we come? Oh, I'll be darned. We don't come, huh? Oh, we came into the 50 though. All right. Did it break here? Oh, wait, 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 wait. All right. Look at that, man. So we came into that push. What the hell was I doing this morning that I didn't see that? All right, so we reaccumulated. What are we talking here for? One minute, three minute, two, one. What's the 30 second look like? Do we come back? Let's see. So we mitigate. Do we come back? Here's 50. Do we come back at all? No, we don't. All right. Okay. I wonder which one he got me, came in. What's up, bro? How's it going, man? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be looking for continuations on US dollar, Swiss franc. I'm guessing this is the entry he took this morning. He took it out of the 50%. Well, no, no, I'm guessing he took it out. of. The, he said he took two trades. So I'm guessing he took the first one here out of the 50 which would have been a 2.6 pip. So it's sitting at about one to 19. And then he took a second one out of this 50, which be about a one, yeah, it's a two, two to one, one to 19. I'd still be all day long. I'd be looking for price to come back into demand. That's the area I'd be looking at. So, you know, this, this potentially could play out as a distribution. I'd really like for that high up here to get taken. So, you know, take a look at what we're doing here, right? This was just a complex pullback. Coming back, did, did we come back into demand? I mean, we did, you know, I mean, this, this is the entire right here. This is the entire move, you know, and it looks like we came into 50 of it. Like if we, if we measure that entire move, Oh well, yeah, yeah, we came into fifty of it. So, you know, I, I this this to me is a pretty good uh, definitive, you know, reason for buyer of seeing buyers come into the market. This would have been a break of order flow, but this is what I want, right? I want to see what do we do here? Do we distribute? Do we come back down? Can I can I work a schematic out of here? But 
you know, I'll tell you right now, I'm not looking for sells on US dollar Swiss franc. I'd be looking for buys on this, buys the whole way. Uh, there's, there's no reason not to look for buys, you know, and then targets, you know, targets all day long are, you know, make a new high up here, you know, 90, 93, 70, 93, 80 areas where I'm going to be looking. All right. Um, yeah. All right. So continuing down with it, um, you know, and you, I was, I was looking for shorts. Um, yeah, I was looking for shorts, you know, unfortunately, um, yeah, man, unfortunately, some really, some really good, uh, some really good plays out of here. Um, you know, I was looking for a price to come here. This is, this is the crap we get right there. I had a, I had a limit order on the 50%. Uh, I had a limit order there on 50% and that's what my limit order missed by. I think it was point, point two, point three. My limit order missed by point three. That's what it missed on. So, um, you know, now we've made a new low. You can see the price action. There, there's no, nothing about this is showing signs of strength. And we have invalidated this wannabe demand that absolutely did nothing. All it did was just get us up to the 50%, right? So, you know, again, looking for continuations to go short. Um, I would be the, the very first area I'd be looking at, depending on what we do during London, is I want to see how we react from New York's price action that did this, right? Um, and if we trade above here, then, you know, I'll tell you, like, I'm personally, you could see my alert right up here. I'm still going to be looking in this blue box. All right, man, have a good one. Yeah, I'm still going to be looking in that blue box. All right. Um, and then, you know, yeah, odd CAD, odd CAD's on there. You can see, you know, I'm just seeing what the heck we're doing. We are in a distribution here, right? We are in a distribution here. Um, but I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not ready to commit to anything yet. You know, like I said, I, I like NZD CAD's price action and you can kind of just see what I've done. You know, I've kind of actually, uh, yeah, so I've boxed it out, you know, we'll see, there we go. We'll see what we do, you know, come the morning. Uh, if we break this low, that's something I'll be interested in kind of playing into. And if not, no big deal, you know, um, I'll be, I'll be interested in, uh, hold on, bear with me one sec. One of my daughters is texting me what she won't. Uh, okay. okay, cool. Sorry. Um, I'm going to try and get through this pretty quick because I got to, I got to run and go pick them up here in a second. Um, so odd cat, I'm still looking for the shorts. I'm just not looking for anything right now. I mean, we're definitely, you know, we're in a redistribution area, but just keep in mind, you know, can we come higher? Yeah. I mean, we can, you know, this is, this is the distro that's maintaining structure right here, right? That distribution is what we essentially got this push here. Um, so if price, if price does that, that's where I'm going to be looking. Um, bu -bu -bu -bum. okay. The, and then odd chef, you can see my odd chef alerts been going off. I'm trying to see what the heck it's done. So I'm, I'm short, I'm looking for shorts on odd chef, you know, nothing about this is strength. Um, one of the key things I was looking at was, so we know that supply came in here and this was our order flow, right? We had Asian highs. And what do we do? We beautiful distribution out of the Asian highs, right? So I want to play, ideally, I want to play out of this distro. And, you know, if we have a distribution and we start to see price accumulating here, we have to assume that this is an accumulation to get up into supply and then commit to a redistribution. So I'm actually going to be moving... 
going to be moving my alert a little higher. I want to see what we do out of this manipulation. I was looking for a distro out of here, specifically out of London price action that causes the low, right? Um, you know, we, we didn't get it, but we also didn't make a new low. So could we trade higher? Yes. And could this be an accumulation? Yeah, we got our three drive, right? You got your three drive in here, build your creek, walk it up, get into the distro, right? That's what I want to see. And, you know, the distro that I'd be looking at for potential sells, right? This comes into 50% of our UTAD, right? Uh, this on itself was a redistribution as well. So we know that in here or in here is where supply came in. So anywhere be between like 65, 900 and like 68, 66, 100, that like 20 pip range is where I'm going to be looking for the continuation, you know, give me a distribution in those areas. And that's where I'm going to be looking to short it, you know, but overall you've got a super clean distribution that's sitting here, right? Super clean, um, you know, and I want to play out of it. So that's what I'm going to be looking. Continuation down on odd chef uh, out of supply. And ideally it's going to be like out of this area right here. Um, uh, is the UTAD the whole push up or? Yeah, yeah. so for me, the, if I was going to measure like my UTAD, it's that right there. That's my UTAD. So like if, I, if, I, if I'm marking this out, here's how I mark it. Hold on. Here's how I mark it. So climax to AR, test to MSAL, uh, up thrust, uh, secondary test, secondary test, UTED. Uh, and then, you know, ultimately now for structure, right? For structure, um, You know, you want to see, so you have, give me a sec here. So you have this to this, then you have that to that. So that's why I had this here and we broke. And then here's my test, right? Uh, and then your major sign of weakness, all right? So ideally, you know, could we come into a little higher? We can, but I'm, I'm pretty confident that this was the attempt at a mitigation. So this is where I'm looking for my distro. Okay. Um, so odd chef continuations, same thing. You know, if I'm bearish odd chef, I gotta be bearish AU. And unfortunately, like AU's price action, just you know, there, there's just nothing that I really want to do out of anything in here. Now we did leverage it, you know, we had some divergence here, uh, because this is where NU actually made the high where we were looking for cells. Um, you know, I'm still bearish on this. Um you know, but when you look at this price action, nothing is put together really cleanly, you know? So, you know, I'm just going to kind of give it, you know, a, a once over in the morning. If I see some price action, I'm like, oh, okay. You know what? This makes sense. Let me, let me dive into this. I'll do it. You know, but other than that, I will, you know, I'm just going to let it play out. Um, CAD chef, right? CAD chef. This is what I'm looking for. CAD chef, you know, here's your redistribution overall. We're bearish, right? I mean, Cat Chef, I've been talking about Cat Chef for a while. We've just been selling off, selling off, selling off. You know, follow your market cycle. Distro, redistro, right? Um, you know, I was looking for price to come back up into this area here. We just didn't get it. Um, and instead, what do we have, right? We have a distro into a redistro, into a redistro, into a redistro. So, you know, I'm pretty convinced that this accumulation that did absolutely nothing is going to get taken. So where I'm going to be looking for continuation moves is out of here. We come up into here and I can get an entry. I'm taking it down. All right. I'm going to be shorting it. Um, so that's, that's catch uh, chef. And I know a couple of people had, um, had cad J we were looking for buys. So you can see I had the, I had the 11 minute marked out. Um, Bro, this is stupid. Dude, I'm telling you, I'm going to start putting, I'm going to start putting freaking 50 bucks on, on my alerts. Look at that crap. There's my alert. Is this where you took it from? Hold on.
after a UTAD price has mitigated 50% of the UTAD, what do you look for confirmation for 80% re-entry? What do I look for for confirmation? If it's if it's already tapped the 50% and made a new low, if it's if it's made a new low, then I'm not looking for the 80%. If it hasn't made a new low, then yeah, I'm, I'm putting the entry on the 80. Where did this come back into? You got it, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get going here in a minute too. I've got, I've got some stuff I gotta do. Um, I don't know. I'm not convinced yet that this is going to go higher. <clears throat> I'm not convinced yet. We played we played nicely into the 11 minute though. I mean, we did play nicely into it. I would be I don't know. I mean, we're bullish on it. So structure supports the buys. I mean, you guys can see this. Structure supports the buys. We we broke this, right? We accumulated higher time frame. We're massively bullish. Is the Asian and Frankfurt session that you pay attention to? Um, yeah, I mean, that's the Frankfurt Frankfurt price action is where I want to see the manipulation of Asian price action. So show the 11 minute uh like what the what the 11 minute is yeah so so what what did this do what did that do yep exactly right confirm the schematic Right, SC, ST, ST, spring. Confirm the schematic. So it's our slingshot, right? Here's our extreme, here's our slingshot. So here's your 11 minute. You wanna look for a full, full volume candle, right? There she is. If that, ain't mitigate, if that ain't manipulation at its finest, there she is. What did it do, right? took that low, swept liquidity. This was the move that caused that break of structure. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, and here, here it is like on the one minute, you could, you could see the minute, the manipulation, right? I mean, you know, ideally, what are we looking at? Like th this is, you know, this is nothing, right? This is, this is just crap, you know, like this ties into a re little, little area of demand, right? Whatever it is, what it is. But what we have here is this. What do we have here? What is that? Right? That's your distro, right? Everyone knows that's your distro. Yep, exactly. That's your distro. You get one drive and you get two drives, right? What do I say? Three drives up, two drives down, right? There's your distro. And then confirms our reaccumulation. This, what do you want to play out of the shakeout? That's your shakeout. If that any shake out, I don't know what is because that thing sweeps all this crap right here. So this this was significant, right? This move, and then again session time, right? When did this happen? Heart of New York session, right? The heart of New York session, boom, right there. All right. So th this was key, you know. And then fast forward, you know, you could see all I, all we did was measure the fifty and the eighty. And, you know, we, we smacked dab. Uh, well, you know, the, the 80% entry was five pips. The 50 was 11. So that's, that's why I was, I wanted the 80% because that 50%, I mean, we're, we're getting borderline some shenanigans of, of some high stops, but apparently CAD J likes to hit my damn alert and not my entry because we fell short 0.6 pips. So Three drives up, two drives down. Yeah, just for reaccumulation, right? Three drives up gives you your distro. 
So you get three, ah, come on, three drives up minimum, climax, test, up thrust, two drives down, LPSY, LPSY, right? You want to see an accumulation here, your creek, BOS, jump of the creek, test of your shakeout. Hold on. Test of your shakeout. It's a reaccumulation. Yeah. 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 yeah cool. Um, yeah. There you go. Someone asked the difference between structure break and liquidity grab. Um, yeah. I mean, I'll tell you right now, you, you're typically not going to get, you know, just, just remember this. What is the purpose of a liquidity grab? All right. Um, you know, that's, that I guess is the first thing that you have to understand, you know, why, why, why did, why did price come here? Why did price come here and make this move? You know, why? Yeah, I mean, it's a, yeah, we're understanding it's a continuation play, but why did they come here? Why did they do that, right? And, you know, remember, it's all manipulation. Well, why do they have to manipulate the market? They have to sell down to get their order filled, right? So in order for them to get these orders filled so that they can now turn around and go this way, they need to convert their, their you know, essentially sell orders, right, into buy orders. So if you have, if you're, if you're in here, if your buy entry was here, if this is your, your buy and your stop loss is here, your stop loss is a sell order, right? Not us, but like say hedge funds, say, you know, say larger liquidity um, institutions that offer that, you know, they need to now manipulate it down. So they're filling buy orders, you know, because now they can convert that $1 of a buy into that $1 that sell from, their, from the stop loss. So the liquidity grab is just in order for them to be able to do this. Yeah, yep, that's all it is. You know, that's all it is. And it's not even, remember, it's not even just like, you know, yes, it's a stop loss, but it's a sell order, not a stop loss. You know, they could care less about a stop loss, right? What they, what they need is they need sell orders so that they can do one for one for their buy order. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, so anyway, so that's Kajay. I'm looking for the bullishness on it. You know, um, ideally I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, pay attention to what it does during London session. And, you know, if, if we start to see this movement up, just play the continuation play, right? What's the continuation play? Continuation play is you get evidence of that distro price walking down. You get that manipulation, break the high. All right, let it come back down, mitigate out, take it up. You know, I don't need to always play the reversal. Like, you know, I, I, I don't mind the, the, uh, the continuation move. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Awesome, man. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, okay, cool, cool. Uh, and then the last one is GJ. So, man, GJ is... <sighs> I, I'll tell you this. Um, you know, I'm bullish on GJ, right? Bullish on GJ. You know, have we come back into demand? Yes, we have. Am I happy I haven't wasted the last three weeks, 18 days? Yes. I am glad I haven't wasted the last 18 days using up margin and trying to sit into this. You know, instead, what I'm going to wait for is I will wait for, you know, I mean, th this is, this appears to be bullish, right? Appears to be, because we we've got, We've got our accumulation. The only issue I'm having is we haven't broken anything yet. Yes, we did take out this high, right? But at this point, I'm only in a type two. So right here, we're still in a type two. And a break of structure is, a, is, is I need a little more than just a break of structure to take the buy out of it, right? I need a break of structure. I need invalidation of some supply. I need a sign of strength, 
we don't have a sign of strength. We have a sign of nobody knows what the hell to do with GJ. That's what we have. You know, um, when you, when you, when we do this, right. If I were to, if I were to show you just this chart, hold on. If I were to show you just this, can anyone tell me who is in control? Supplier demand. And if, and if you answer, please write a little synopsis as to why you say, because I can't tell you who's in control. Um, there, there's absolutely no, you know, we have a, <laughs> we have a distribution that does not break a low. We have a redistro. Well, hold on. Let me bring it into context. Hold on. There we go. Okay. So we have a distribution and a redistro that just trade back into demand. And then we invalidate supply, right? Only to come down back into whatever this was and ultimately make a new order flow high, right? But we're not seeing any evidence of buys. Like when you look at these candles, like all of this, all of these wicks in here, right? That's more like profit taking. There, there's just, you know, like either give me a spring, right? Break structure or give me a sign of strength. Get above this distro, you know? That, that's, it's, it's uh, you thought it was sellers? Um, well, where, where are sellers in control from though? Yeah, where do, where do you uh, three confirmations for what for a type two? Yeah, yeah, sign of strength. Yeah, Ruben's got it. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking at it like this, you know, short term, I wouldn't say sellers are in control because what do they do? When you look at this, looks like buyers, but what's this look like? You know, for me, that's what I see. You know, that's, that's what I see. So, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of different opinions, a lot of different opinions in this. And then, you know, you could just see, you can see, right. This was in control, but we broke it. So ideally, this will play out nice because I'd like to sell it down into my buy area or at minimum into like 50 or 80 percent to then buy up. But, you know, there's there's a lot of waiting going on with GJ right now. You know, it, there's there's a lot of views you can look at it, you know, and yeah, I'm 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 going to be just patiently waiting on it. You know, but like I said, right right now, like this, no clue, man, no clue. Um, am I allowed to post my GJ bias? Yeah, 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 go ahead. Yeah. And then, yeah, while he's posting that, I'll, I'll take a look at that chart. Um, you know, of course, nothing's changed, man. I'm waiting on oil. I may, I may not actually physically trade this. I may just leverage it with the Canadian dollar. You know, um, you know, because if if we start to see some strength, then you know, you know, the CAD's going to appreciate. We're going to see some bullish movement on the CAD. <clears throat> um, but yeah, this is this is the area I'm looking at. You know. I'll see if we can come in there. Later, man. Have a good one, dude. You got it. Yeah.
Yeah. So this is this is kind of what oil is looking like. You know, so we had the major distribution that came right in and accumulated in prior demand. And, you know, now, you know, we're seeing evidence of a distribution, but remember, accumulation into the next market cycle should be what a reaccumulation. Reaccumulation start out as a distro, right? So you've got you've got price that needs to walk its oil down. There's your creek confirmation, shakeout, mitigation, you get two entries, you know? So yeah, yeah. If this, if this continues to appreciate, we're gonna see Canadian dollars start to appreciate as well. All right, so, I mean, that's, that's pretty much everything on my watch list. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much everything I'm looking at. Like I said, I'm really, I'm focusing more on US dollar crosses this week. Um, you know, I am, I'll tell you this, like personally, my bias is Aussie and NZD weakness, right? Simply off of the soft currencies. This, they're both soft currencies, right? Anti per diems um, with, you know, like you can, you can kind of build your story. Like my whiteboard, this is what my whiteboard looks like. You know, US indices, I am short-term bearish. So if I'm bearish on U.S. indices, soft currencies are also going to depreciate. Japanese yen is going to appreciate because money is leaving indices, getting into safe havens, right? So that's why we're seeing the yen, the U.S. dollar, and the Swiss franc starting to appreciate. You know, you should also start to see gold appreciate as well. So like the gold market should be going up higher as well. Um, but there's a lot of other factors that are going into gold right now. Um, like when we look at, when we look at gold futures, right? When we look at gold futures, let's go up to like a four hour. You know, what the hell this thing is doing, I can't tell you. You know, we, we have been sideways for 180 days. You know, uh, what do you mean? Do I sometimes trade off Asian range? Like, do I trade out of Asian price action? Yeah. So, I I don't I don't know what what gold is doing, nor do I care. I know I know what this is doing. I'm selling this. So this is definitely something I'm interested in, but not gold. Gold, uh, yeah, gold is a mess right now. Um, yeah, bro, have a good one, man. Peace out. Yeah. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's pretty much all I got, guys. Uh, you got it, man. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, she's not home yet. I've got to, uh, she's actually bringing the girls home now. So um, you got it, bro. Absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, uh, like I said, this week, tons of news. So, you know, make sure um, you're prepared for it. You know, listen, I, I love, I love big news events because uh, it gives some movement in the market, you know? So Yeah. You got it, man. You got it. Cool, cool. All right, guys. Well, listen, enjoy. I will see everybody later, man.